and they actually are quite tame. Like you see here, uh, I personally haven't seen a tank full of calvus like this. And just to show you the amount of fry that are in this aquarium. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my June 2022 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it. And this is the first tank I'm showing you this month. It has my largest white Alto Lamprologus calvus fry, as well as my first fur Risha, the five that I recently purchased at the Cichlid Club. These guys are really settling into this aquarium now. I love this tank. As you can see, it houses so many calvus. Uh, I personally haven't seen a tank full of calvus like this. I'm sure it's quite unique, although there would be a few out there. Grateful to have this amount of calvus in one aquarium. And they are of decent size. These guys are pushing two years now and are actually at a breeding age, although I don't intend to spawn any of these. These will be sold off over the next few months, uh, more than likely at my cichlid club. The first of Furisha, this probably won't be their home forever. I'm actually considering putting them in to a slightly smaller aquarium, a four foot tank, which is four foot wide by four foot deep and housing them by themselves in there, just so I can really control their diet. These guys have competing diet requirements. The calvus are carnivores. The first of Furisha prefer a veggie diet, although they can have some protein in that diet. But because of those conflicting diet requirements, I'm considering uh, taking the Risha back out of this tank. But for now, they're okay in here. What I do for that, I feed the first of fur Risha their veggie pellets first. They get full on those. Obviously, the calvus will eat those veggie pellets as well. And that's okay for them. And then I put in meaty foods for the uh, calvus to eat. That way the Risha, because they're already full on their veggie pellets, won't be able to eat too much of the food that's there for the calvus. So that's how I'm getting away with uh, the conflicting dietary requirements with these two types of fish. Now, if you had trophies, I wouldn't suggest you do that. I really would suggest you keep the trophies separate. That said, I've never kept trophies in my life. All I know is that the trophies, they do require a veggie diet. They can suffer from Malawi bloat if they get too much animal protein and obviously they will die. And that is why I feed them first with their veggie pellets, get them full on those, then feed the calvus and the first fur Risha won't eat because they're full. But anyway, there you go guys, my white Alto Lamprologus calvus tank. So the next tank we're getting an update on this month is the Neo Lamprologus Lelupi Aquarium. This tank sits directly below the tank you just saw with my white Alto Lamprologus calvus. And it houses my Lelupi fry that are at the grow out stage and are ready to be sold off. These guys are doing really well in here. They've brightened up since I cleaned all the algae off the bottom pane of glass. And you can see I have loads in this aquarium. Plan is to sell these guys off to the wholesaler in the coming weeks. And maybe by the time uh, you see this video out, these guys will be sold off. I love watching this aquarium. Again, it's another kind of unique aquarium, I think, uh, especially to see this amount of Leilupi in one aquarium. Uh, I definitely do not suggest you guys do this. I only do this for a short period of time to grow them up, get some size on them, and then sell them off fast. And I don't intend to keep them in here for more than a few months, uh, two to three months, and then they're gone, they're sold. If you wanna do something with Leilupi, I suggest you start off with a group of, say, six juveniles in a five-foot aquarium, and put other Tanganyikan cichlids in there, so you have a nice Tanganyikan community aquarium, such as Gillidochromus or other Lamprologa species. And uh, for the open water, you can put in some Cyprochromus, and you'll have a beautiful, colorful, Tanganyikan community aquarium. But I love coming in the fish room and looking at this tank, guys. I just sit in front of it and uh, just get mesmerized by all the activity, all those Leilupi swimming around and interacting with each other. And they actually are quite tame. Like you see here, I've got my hand up in front of the aquarium and it just takes one or two to get spooked and the entire school of Leilupi will follow. And it's just, that, that activity is amazing to watch. So in my April and May 2022 fish room update tours, I showed you guys this aquarium, which has my Gillidochromus regani in it, has a breeding pair of regani. Now you can see there are a lot more regani at the front of the tank, and those are the fry. Now the reason why I wanted to show you guys this aquarium again for a third consecutive month is so you could see the size that the regani put on over the last few months. You can see them at the one month mark here, two month mark here, and the third month. And as you can see here, they are at the inch size. So they actually are approaching that sellable size now. So that's quite quick. But over the next week or two, I'm actually gonna be pulling all the rocks out, pull the sponge filters out. Then I will catch all the Regani fry out of this aquarium, pop them in their own grow out aquarium, 
and that will give the Regani pair a chance to breed again, to spawn again, and they won't experience the stress of having to protect their new spawn from the older generation of fry. I have heard that Regani can sometimes step breed, but I haven't had any success with that. Step breeding, if you didn't know what that is, it is where you can have older generations of fry with younger generations of fry in the one aquarium and they won't eat each other. Examples of Hanganekan cichlids that do step breed are Neolamprologus brachati and Neolamprologus multifasciatus. Those guys, the older generations of fry, won't prey on their younger brothers and sisters. However, um, I have heard that Regani do the same thing, but I haven't had any luck with the, the, the spawns that I've gotten from this breeding pair. So unfortunately for them, they are only able to bring up one generation of fry at a time. So the plan is to pull the fry out, put them in their own grout aquarium, and then let the Regani pair breed again. And they won't have to have the stress of defending that new generation of fry from the older generation. And this tank houses my Neolamprologus brevis sunspot breeding trio. Now, again, I showed you this aquarium last month, and the reason for that was to show you the amount of fry that they had. And I do consider these species to be a relatively easy shell dweller from Lake Tanganyika to breed. The reason why I'm showing you this aquarium this month, though, is to show you the amount of fry they now have. And there are loads in this aquarium. It is insane. I don't think I can remember them having this amount of fry at any one time in the past. There are a range of slightly different sizes in the fry in this aquarium. Some are just pushing uh, past the one centimetre mark. Some are about the 1.7, 1.8 uh, centimetre mark. Uh, the vast majority are under one centimetre. And uh, so far, this breeding trio have ha been able to raise numerous generations of fry in this one aquarium at the same time. Now that's because they've spawned in quick succession of each other, both females. I've got two females in here and one male and he alternates his spawning with both of those females and because they've been able to spawn so quickly in quick succession they've been able to raise many generations of fry at the one time now like i said with the regani these guys are set to sometimes step breed i've never really seen that to a successful uh, population size in the one aquarium. Once the fry start to push the 1.5 centimeter mark to two centimeter mark, they will prey on their younger brothers and sisters that are newly hatched out of the shell. So I really haven't had success uh, with, with Brevis fry after they're around the 1.5 centimeter mark to two centimeter mark. It's best that you pull them out of the tank if you want subsequent generations of fry to continue to come out of those parent shells the older generations of fright will pick those babies off but so far again because the breeding trio have been able to breed very quickly in quick succession uh, i'm getting a lot of fry in this tank and just to show you the amount of fry that are in this aquarium i've just popped in some live microworms you can see that cloudy looking area in the aquarium that's the microworms feeding the live food brings the fry off the sand bed and into the water column and then there you'll be able to see how many there are now uh, and that's why i've put the food in this aquarium now the other reason why i'm showing you this tank from a low profile like pretty much flush with the sand bed is two reasons one to see the fry they are so camouflaged they're very hard to see second reason is because i have a very bad cyanobacteria outbreak in this tank i've been battling it with chemiclean and, and numerous water changes and nothing seems to work I eventually have been pulling out the cyanobacteria by hand off the sand bed. I can't simply uh, gravel vac this sand bed, obviously because the fry sit on the sand bed and it will be inevitable that I would suck up some fry. So I don't really want to do that. So I just have to grin and bear it with the cyanobacteria for the time being. Uh, I will hopefully eventually win this battle. But for the time being, the cyanobacteria is winning. The ChemiClean, I think, has an expiry date, although it doesn't say so on the pack. It used to work, it doesn't work anymore. I'm really frustrated by this cyanobacteria outbreak, and that's another reason why I'm showing you this aquarium from a low angle, a low profile, so you don't see all the cyanobacteria, because it is quite bad in this tank. But it doesn't really disturb the fish. The fish are fine, as you can see here. There are heaps of fry in this aquarium. And again, it's another tank that I like to see, that I like to sit down and watch. I sit in front of and watch because of the sheer volume of fry that the brevis have been pumping out of late. So it's really nice to see. But I just wanted to show you guys this tank again this month. So, so you can see the sheer volume of fry that have uh, been spawned in this tank in four weeks. It's just crazy. Now if you'd like to see every single tank I have in the fish room, I suggest you watch my full fish room tour for 2022. You can watch that video right here. 
you want to see how the sump system works on my fish room, I suggest you watch this playlist right here. So there you have it guys, my June 2022 fish room update tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.